54 years ago, our nation was in a state of shock after President John F. Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas, Texas. November 22nd, 1963 was the date. Yes, and tonight, 7 Action News reporter Gino Vici sat down with a world-renowned forensic pathologist who was asked by Congress to review the autopsy photos in 1975 after conspiracy theories began to grow. So he joins us now live in St. Clair. Well, Glenda and Dave, hello to both of you tonight. Dr. Warner Spitz during his career has examined more than 60 thousand autopsies. He's testified before Congress even after Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated. He says, but there's one that has haunted him, one he's thought about over and over and over, and that's this one, JFK. It is hard for me to relive all that. Time heals all wounds, but not for this Metro Detroit forensic pathologist. Dr. Warner Spitz, who in 1975 was asked by Congress to examine the autopsy of President John F. Kennedy. The memory of seeing the photos for the first time is something he'll never forget. Cold sweat ran down my back to see the president on the autopsy table like that. The U.S. Congress decided shortly after the president's assassination, the documents related to John F. Kennedy's death, including autopsy photos, hundreds of them, would be released 50 years later. That brings us to today, 54 years later. Controversy still surrounds November 22, 1963. Because the autopsy report describes it as an entrance bullet wound, and that's not changeable at this time because Dr. Hume, who did the autopsy, has died. After spending the day at the National Archives in Washington, D.C., Dr. Spitz concluded then, as he still does today, the bullet wound in the front of JFK's neck was in fact an exit wound because, to put it plainly, two entrance wounds would have resulted in two bullets lodged in the president's body. As for the release of the JFK files, Dr. Spitz says it may finally end many years of controversy and speculation. They should see and they should remember what happened. And Dr. Spitz, who of course is the former medical examiner for Wayne and, oh, I'm sorry, Wayne and Macomb County, says he believes Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone and he believes after the release and the review of these documents, those who believe otherwise will also agree. We're live in St. Clair Shores, Gino Vici, 7 Action News. All right, Gino, thank you for that look back. All right, Glenda. Thank you, Dave. Okay.